So I wanted to show off this awesome .NET app that I just deployed to production. So you can come over here and add a viewer, add, hmm, that button's not working. Oh no, my binding for that button is broken. So I just deployed a broken build. A situation like this could really happen to anyone. So imagine we're building a .NET front-end application. It could be a Maui app or a WPF app. We could have 100% unit test coverage, but we still don't know if our application actually works. Whether we're deploying changes to production or merging changes from a pull request into our main branch, we don't know if things like our user interface or database connections, etc., are actually working. You could try to work around this by maybe unit testing your user interface, but that would be tedious to set up. And actually in .NET, it's not gonna work anyways. You could try unit testing against your database, but that's gonna be slow. And really the intent of unit tests is to get quick feedback on whether or not units of our application are working. Or maybe we could just not automate a test at all in this situation. Let's just run our application and manually go through every single use case that our application supports. Yeah, that's not gonna be very fast or fun or scalable. So unit testing won't save us here. Manual testing will slow us down. We need a solution, an automated test that'll give us confidence that our application is gonna run and work fully as expected. And this is where end-to-end -end testing is gonna save us. Wait, you can do end-to-end -end testing in .NET? Via the Windows application driver and Appium, yes, you can do end-to-end -end tests on a .NET front-end application. Let's see it in action. First, we'll need to install the Windows application driver. So the Windows application driver is a service that's gonna run on our local machine and allow us to communicate with and start up the application that we wanna test. Again, you'll need to install this, so I'll leave a link in the description for steps on setting up the Windows application driver. Once you have the Windows application driver installed, go ahead and start it up, and that should open it up in a terminal session. Next, open up the solution with the .NET front-end application that you want to test. In the solution, add a new project and create some kind of test project. Doesn't matter if it's MS test, N unit, X unit, etc. We just need something where we can write tests and assert logic. So that being said, in my case, I'm going to select an N unit test project. And I'm going to name this project the same as the application that I want to test, plus dot test dot end to end, because this is going to contain our end to end test. And the framework version shouldn't matter much here. We're going to target .NET 6. Next up, we need to install the Appium driver in our end-to-end -end test project so that we can communicate with our Windows application driver, which is going to drive our running application. So in our project, let's go to Manage NuGet Packages and search for Appium, and we're going to install appium.webdriver. We can just grab the latest version here and install. Now we're ready to start writing our first end-to-end -end test. So the first thing I want to do is connect Appium to the Windows application driver so that we can boot up and communicate with our application that we want to test. So via Appium, we're going to initialize a Windows driver and we're going to connect that to our local Windows application driver session, which in my case is running on localhost port 4723. And let's import all this from the Appium package. Next, we need to tell the Windows driver to boot up the exe of the application that we want to test. So we can specify that with Appium options. So let's initialize those and pass those into the Windows driver. And then we need to specify the app capability on our Appium options and ultimately pass in the exe of the application that we want to test. An easy way to grab the path to the exe that we want to test is to build the application that you want to test. And we can see that outputs a path to the DLL of our built application. So we can copy that path and paste that in as our app. And instead of pointing to the DLL of our built application, we can point to the executable. Finally, before testing this out, let's make sure we close the driver when we're finished with our test. Now in Visual Studio, if we come over to the test explorer, we can run our test and our app should have booted up, but it didn't. And we see an error message that says, fail to locate opened application with app ID and then the path to our exe. I don't know why I got this error for this application. I didn't get it in other apps that I tried to end-to-end -end test, but I found a workaround by adding another capability to our Appium options for the app working dir, and then pointing that to the directory that contains our executable. And now if I run the test, the test succeeds. Now, if you've run into other weird issues like I did with having to specify the app working directory, 
I would recommend checking out the WinApp driver GitHub repository. There's tons of issues, tons of good discussion. Someone else might be having the same issue and might have found a workaround. Or you could post a new issue and I'm sure someone else in this great community will reach out to help. We can also prove that the driver is booting up our application by throwing in a thread sleep before we close the driver and running our test. We should see our application pop up. Here we go, I got it over here. There we go, driver is driving our application. Now that we're able to run our application, we're ready to interact with it via locators. So locators allow us to find UI elements and ultimately interact with them. Now there's a few different locators we could use, but the one I've had the most luck with is find element by accessibility ID, which involves adding automation IDs to our XAML elements and then querying for those automation IDs. So for example, in our end-to-end -end tests, I wanna click the add YouTube viewer button. So on that button in the XAML, I'm gonna dig into automation properties dot automation ID and set that to some kind of descriptive ID. Now in our end-to-end -end tests, we can grab our driver and again, use find element by accessibility ID. And we're gonna paste in the automation ID value that we just added in our XAML. And that'll give us back a windows element representing the button that has this automation ID. And in our test, we want to click that button. So let's build our WPF application so that we get a build that has that automation ID. And now let's run our test. I've added a thread.sleep. So we'll be able to see us clicking that button. And there we go, we click the button and it opens up our modal. So now that we're able to open the modal, I wanna put in a username, click this checkbox and this checkbox, submit this form. And then I wanna assert that we actually create a YouTube viewer and it pops up over in this list. So that being said, I'm gonna add automation IDs to all the elements that I wanna interact with for our end-to-end -end tests. So that'll be the username text box, the is subscribed checkbox, the is member checkbox, the submit button, and lastly, all of my YouTube viewer list view items. And this one's actually gonna be a dynamic binding for the automation ID. So it's gonna be the username of the YouTube viewer that we add. And we're gonna format this to be the username appended with underscore YouTube viewer listing item. And this string format will ensure that we get a unique and descriptive automation ID. So after we click the add YouTube viewer button and open up the add YouTube viewer modal, we're gonna take the username text box and type in via send keys, singleton Sean as the username. Then we'll check off the is subscribed checkbox and check off the member checkbox as well. Then we'll grab the submit button for that form and click that to submit. And then the YouTube viewer should appear in our list view. So we're gonna grab that YouTube viewer listing item via the dynamic listing item automation ID, which is prefixed with our username and then underscore YouTube viewer listing item. And this is where you can leverage whatever test framework that you're using to set up some assertion. So we're using n unit. We're gonna assert that the added YouTube viewer listing item is not null. And this will assert that we completed the form and created our YouTube viewer. Now keep in mind if any of your locators fail from not being able to find the element, then these are gonna throw exceptions. And if we throw an exception here, then we're not gonna be able to close and clean up the driver. So let's wrap all this in a try catch and move everything inside. And actually this is not gonna be a try catch. It's gonna be a try finally. So whether everything succeeds or we get an error, we always wanna clean up and close the driver. So let's build our application with all of our new automation IDs. And finally, let's run our end-to-end -end test. Here we go, start up, open the modal, fill out the form. There we go, YouTube viewer was created. I threw in a thread.sleep so we could see this. And our assertion passes, our test succeeded. So we have successfully end-to-end -end tested a piece of our .NET front-end application. Now keep in mind, this is just scratching the surface. There are other pieces that we're gonna have to investigate, such as trying to incorporate all of these end-to-end -end tests into a CI pipeline, and also making sure that if we have multiple end-to-end -end tests, that those tests don't interfere with each other or that we're cleaning up our environment in between tests. So just to summarize, we set up and ran the Windows application driver so that we could start up and communicate with the application that we wanna test. Then we set up a .NET testing project and added the Appium NuGet package so that we could run our end-to-end -end tests. First, we connected to the Windows application driver and started up the executable of the application that we wanted to test and then we interacted with 
and made assertions on our test application via automation IDs. So hopefully you can leverage end-to-end -end testing with the Windows application driver and Appium in your own projects to make sure your application runs and fully works as expected without having to do slow manual testing.